Day three in Thailand for the IDBF World Cup and straight away things have once again got a little bit silly billy. We saw Rahma Owen Abdullah, the boy, the 73 kilo number one. Um, he not only matched what we've seen from Shizuong in a training hall, he not only matched what we've seen from Rizki now in a training hall, he did it for two singles, 160 kilos twice and he actually tried to double it. He was doubling the whole way up, like power plus four, power plus four, doubled 150, hit the 160 and then stepped back. I think his dad was like, okay, I'm gonna come in and just like straighten the plates or whatever. And then he saw Rahmat start to approach the bar again. He's like, no, no son, don't do it, don't do it, save it. Um, so everyone had a little smile out of that. I think maybe even when he did a second single, he kind of looked like he was gonna go for it again. And again, his dad is like, no, don't do it. Just prior to that, we had uh, we had the Mexicans, the 259s, Daphne and uh, Yanis Gomez, who's number nine in the world. So watching them kind of side by side go heavy, we saw some, I think we saw like a 95 kilo hang snatch at one point, certainly a 90, maybe a miss at 95, but uh, they're gonna have an interesting battle because obviously right now, Yanis is in the driver's seat. She's in the Olympic slot, but uh, Daphne is gonna wanna try and take that this week. Then this morning we rock up and we see none other than Lee Sang, but a very thick Lee Sang. He's bumped up to the 73 kilo class and he did a standard session. We actually messaged him a while ago about, I don't know what it was, maybe we were getting him some training kit or something. And he hinted that he was gonna be looking a little bit thick. Uh, and uh, we said 73 and he was like, shh. So uh, yeah, he's gone 73. He's gonna try and steal back to Yo's spot. And uh, There's a lot of bikes in Thailand. And uh, try and get that Olympic slot. And he looked good, he snatched 130, clean jerk 170. That looked very nice. Uh, easier than I've seen him do it before. And then 250 for a triple in the back squat, which you've definitely not seen him triple that heavy. That's, that's three and a half times body weight for three, which is just simply nuts. Right after that, we had the Philippines turn up and uh, big session from them. I mean, Vanessa Sano, 71, she's fifth in the world. She snatched 100 kilos, very easy. Uh, she was in the house single actually in Asian Champs. Uh, so she's a very solid lifter. She's pretty secure, but obviously she might want to put on a bit more of a show. Uh, El Renando was there. Uh, Rosie was there, the 49. Uh, John, the 73, 67. 61. Is he? 61 was there. Of course he is, yeah. He's so lean, he has to be a 61. Uh, so we got to film like a full Philippine session, which is great, um, which we'll put up on Wendy Fiance TV at some point for you guys to check out. And then Team China flocked in, and uh, it was pretty good. We, it was a little bit more back to how it normally is, where the athletes separate but stay with their like normal training teammates. So Tian Tao and Liu Hua, who obviously they have the same coach, Coach Yu, uh, they front squatted, and uh, interesting, like, Building up, building up, all looking good. And then they get to 260 kilos. In fact, it was so good that I think at 220, I think Tian Tao started laughing. Like he stood it up and he laughed quite loudly because of the speed of it. Uh, it might've also been at 220 that he almost died re-racking, which is like the proclivity of Chinese athletes to screw up their re-rack and almost drop the bar and kill themselves. It's just so high. It just, I know it's because they're normally, you know, they use the blocks and it's different using the rack, but um, they both hit 240 and then, yeah, 260. Looked pretty heavy for both of them, particularly for uh, Liu Huang Hua, but he's, he's a lot more of a grinder. We were talking about this, like Tian Tao, you know, 260 will look quick, then 265 will stop and he won't get up with it. Liu Huang Hua can grind out, so he grind out his 260. Then dropped to 240, and again, I think they did it for a set of four, maybe, which is crazy. And Tietel's last rep may be the hardest I've ever seen him fight for a lift in his life, which is cool. Um, Liu Hong Hua did it. I think his third rep was quicker than his second, because he was like, screw this, and he just tried harder, which is kind of funny. Then they did heavy holds. I've never seen them do holds this heavy. I'm pretty sure, I didn't confirm it, I'm pretty sure it was 370 kilos. They had 725s on each side which is 175, 350, 370. 
Um, it's very heavy. The ball was bending. The Then on the other side of the gym, uh, Lee Fabin, Lee Dayin, Shizi Young. Shizi Young, clean and jerked. He was up at like 140 uh, on his platform. Then he did the classic, like, can't be bothered to load it because he's so sore. Jumps over to another platform and he hit 160, which was the same weight that we saw Lee Fabin hit. Lee Fabin looks very strong. I think Chen Li going to have a tough time trying to beat him, but it's possible. Uh, Lee Fabin was just, sorry, Chen Li was just squatting, but 160 from Lee Fabin, very solid. It's like, a fraction of a 90% of his world record. Uh, Lee Dayin, power clean and jerks, 170. I don't think he went above that. Then I believe I saw him, I'm not sure if he got it on film, but he front squatted 240. As this was happening, we're off on Wachuma, the Thai 73. He was training, snatch up to 140. Uh, so yeah, a good little session from, from Team China. I actually managed to do a little interview with Tian Tao and with Shizhi Yong. Uh, we're gonna save those for some documentaries that we're shooting for weightlifting on TV, which will be out in the next sort of coming months. Um, but it was interesting, I mean, like, Shizu Young um, talking about Rathmat, saying that he doesn't remember him from back in the day, even though they did compete against each other at the Olympic Games. They both medaled in Tokyo. Rathmat right? was in the B group though, wasn't he? Uh, Rathmat was in the B group and got the bronze, that's why, yeah. Um, he said he doesn't remember him from them, but he certainly knows him now. <laughs> uh, and Tian Tao uh, was talking about, uh, I was asking him about, like, you know, does he watch Lee Dai-in in training, or is it too difficult? And he said, He's like, I don't pay any attention because he's more talented than me, he's better than me, and his training was really good. Um, which I think was him downplaying himself a little bit, but you know, it was good to get a bit of interaction with those those top Chinese lifters. Then the last thing we've seen is um Kade Marvioneer turns up, just the craziest uh, session. We actually were doing a bit of a shoot with him uh, for some new products which we we're gonna be bringing out at some point. Uh, but he so he does a 250 front squat drops it, then cold, like no pulls, 220 clean pulls. Then he drops that and does 200 clean pulls. Then he starts building up again, first off in the close grip snatch, then just a normal snatch up to 140. And then he clean and jerks. I don't, what did he? 160 power clean. What, oh, power clean jerk, 160. He did push press at 150, I think. 150 push press. He's just a mad lad. Like, he's absolutely crazy. Uh, and he had the two um, the two lighter, I think there's a 49 and a 59, maybe 49 and 55. Uh, Venezuelans training next to him. Uh, so good to get uh, basically a whole Venezuela team session as well. Out. We'll put that on Wednesday's TV, which is where you can watch the IWF World Champs. All A sessions streamed there with commentary from me and your boy Max Ata. Uh The 45s are in a few minutes. That was just few days ago or maybe a day ago when you're watching this but uh, the 49s are on Monday the 61s are on Tuesday you don't want to miss it. it's gonna be absolutely insane get your tickets now it's only 9.99 and you get the entire competition we'll see you there